My name is Michael Rudnicki. I'm a senior, senior scientist and director of the Regenerative Medicine Program at the Ottawa Hospital Research Institute and a professor at the University of Ottawa. I'm also scientific director of the Canadian Stem Cell Network. You know, I've been funded by the MDC for, for a very, very long time. My first funding was as a uh, student, a graduate student. I was a recipient of a Stingo, Stephen Fonio uh, studentship, uh, and, and uh, I was also awarded a postdoctoral fellowship from the MDC uh, to study at the um, uh, at MIT, the Whitehead Institute, with Rudolf Janisch. More recently, I've I've received grant funding and operating grants, in particular, that were uh, in partnership with CIHR. And most recently, I've, I've uh, just been uh, notified that I'm, uh, uh, I've been awarded a E-Rare 2 grant, uh, which uh, is a European, European, European Union grant uh, that uh, has partners such as CIHR and MDC. I became very much engaged in the area of, of muscle biology uh, by the discovery of, of a transcription factor called MyOD that was the master regulator uh, or switch controlling the decision of a, of a cell that's not muscle to enter uh, the muscle lineage to, to make skeletal muscle making cells. Uh, that was a gene that was discovered by Hal Weintraub uh, in the in the early 80s, and this was really a um, a, a, a paradigm shifting discovery, and uh, for me it was very exciting the notion that a that a transcriptional regulator, the single product of a single gene that controls other genes, could be a decision making gene, and uh, uh, that really um, uh, was a, not only an important discovery for muscle but for all of developmental biology, and that discovery really engaged me and, and, and made me want to dive deeper in, into this particular area. So a number of years ago we discovered that uh, adult satellite cells, which were, had long been considered a cell that could only make skeletal muscle, were in fact uh, at least two different populations. They were a uh, stem cell population and, uh, and, and a second population that were, were, were more committed, were, had already decided that they were going to become muscle. And uh, we conducted a, um, a fine analysis of, of, of the gene expression comparing these two populations, and we found a cell surface receptor um, called Frizzled7 Frizzled that um, uh, suggested that the protein Wnt7a might be important in controlling the function of these cells. That got us into really studying what Win7A does. What we found, which was um, uh, really paradigm shifting, uh, was that Win7A uh, signaled through Frizzled7 to the muscle stem cell compartment uh, to influence its decision-making process. So when a cell stem cell would divide, rather than giving rise to a committed cell that would go on to differentiate, it gave rise to two stem cells, so that in the presence of Win7A stimulation, the numbers of stem cells would increase through the regeneration process, and this would drive a stimulation and augmentation of the overall repair process. Um, later we found that Win7A also acted on the uh, muscle fibers themselves to stimulate their growth, the so-called hypertrophy, so they would get um, um, a larger caliber size uh, and would double in size in fact. Uh, and, and so that um, Wnt7a is acting at multiple levels. It acts at the stem cell level to, to drive their expansion and it also stimulates the growth of, of the muscle itself so that the muscle is increased in mass overall and this increased mass of muscle has increased numbers of stem cells. In a sense it's, it acts to couple the mass of the tissue to the stem cell reservoir and vice versa. Um, uh, we've really drilled down in, in a, um, um, uh, to find detail to understand the molecular mechanisms that are controlling these different functions uh, and we know a lot about what, how Win7A functions uh, inside cells 
and the processes it's stimulating. And this has really provided a good basis for understanding how, not only how it works, but also a good rationale for moving it towards the clinic. Uh, most recently, we found that we could generate a, a short version of WENT7A uh, where we throw away most of the protein and the small piece retains full biological activity. I think this is really an, uh, an important advance because these proteins have long been very difficult to manufacture. And this really facilitates not only producing this stuff, but also allows its dispersal in tissue. Uh, so we're, we're uh, very hopeful of moving this forward uh, in a way that will uh, be realized in clinical trials. We've been working very closely with our collaborators. It's a biotechnology co uh, company called Fate Therapeutics who are located in San Diego. Uh, they have really optimized uh, the um, manufacture pro process for the protein. That really is a, a critical gate to get through if one is going to use something in clinical trials. If you can't make the protein in sufficient amounts, you can't make use of it in, in a human trial. They really, uh, now using these large-scale processes, can manufacture very large num amounts of the protein. It's right now going through uh, different uh, safety tests, and, uh, and they will be organizing uh, uh, in 2015 a phase one clinical trial. Uh, and um, what that trial will look like, it's not so clear. It'll probably involve direct injection or introduction of the protein into a single muscle group. It won't be throughout the whole body, but in a specific muscle group. Our hope uh, between myself and our, our collaborators is that we'll develop forms of WINT7A that can be uh, introduced throughout the body to stimulate muscle regeneration. I think where this will be um, really helpful to patients is in conjunction with other therapies that um, promote um, uh, expression of, of the mutant gene, for example, dystrophin. Uh, there are several trials underway right now to promote exon skipping that uh, result in a certain amount of, dy of dystrophin being produced in skeletal muscle. But we, if we can combine that with, with, a, with a second approach, to stimulate muscle repair and muscle growth, I think will have far more profound impact that is um, uh, therapeutically effective. My, my research really is quite fundamental. Uh, we are uh, trying to understand how things work. We're taking the, uh, the clock apart and trying to figure out how the cogs and wheels fit together. I think, uh, what does motivate us is, is uh, and I think is also personally satisfying and gratifying, is to see the research move from discovery uh, forward in a way that can potentially help people and help patients. Um, I think, you know, when one starts out in this business, it's about the joy of discovery, trying to figure out how things work. That's all the motivation one needs. But as you get older uh, and uh, after you have your own family, after you meet um, uh, kids with muscular dystrophy, after your you, kids you know with muscular dystrophy pass away, I mean, it really, uh, if one could do something that could uh, improve the quality of life for these children, for their families, that would be, um, uh, I think, a tremendous accomplishment and very satisfying. So E-Rare2 is a multi-country collaborative funding effort targeting rare diseases. It's organized by the European Commission. Interestingly enough, while we're not in Europe, Canada is part of this initiative. And, um, uh, and it, what it means is that different investigators from different countries, from these collaborating countries, can come together, uh, put forward a research proposal, and, uh, uh, and it will be jointly funded by the different participating countries. Um, I am leader of a project to uh, investigate the use of WINT7A in preclinical models. Uh, this project will provide important information that will pave the way to a clinical trial. 
and um, uh, it's really an interesting initiative, a very exciting initiative, and I'm, I'm quite proud to be part of it. So I see that our research, um, uh, with luck, I mean, there's, without question, there can be unforeseen events, uh, perhaps uh, uh, safety issues that could preclude a clinical trial, but I, I'm really interested in seeing our, our, our work culminate in a clinical trial and move forward that way um, and, and potentially impact patients. Uh, hopefully our research will, will um, uh, provide insights um, that will um, perhaps lead to the, to the identification of small drugs that stimulate muscle repair. Um, uh, win 7 I think will have a very important role in the clinic, but ideally we'd want to develop um, pills that stimulate muscle stem cells in a specific fashion and stimulate repair. And I think that, that the work that we're doing to drill down into the molecular mechanisms uh, controlling muscle stem cell function will, will, will allow us to, to move forward in that direction. Um, and uh, we shall see.